Derek Jazora here at your gym in Finchley Central. You're facing Edwin Gerber in your first fight back since beating Malik Scott for the European title. Do you know much about him? No, I watched a couple of rounds with Michael Sprott. So it looked like they were having a pissing contest because they were jabbing and one jab, one jab, one jab. No one wanted to come out and move out of the way. Um, it was a great fight for the Germans, but you know, uh, this Gerber guy don't like going backwards. So uh, it's a bit tricky for me because most, most of my opponents go backwards and he don't like going backwards. So uh, I'm going to stay in his pocket. A lot of people were sort of writing you off maybe in the lead up to the Malik Scott fight, but you faced a very tough opponent there and you stopped him. Yeah, you know what? They, it's only after the fight, the one I had in, the, in Wembley when I boxed the, that guy, I forgot his name actually. People just thought, ah, uh, he's, he's done it all, he's not, he's not, he's not concentrating on him. But, I knew exactly what I was doing because if I came in that fight, looked amazing, looking in great shape, Malik Scott wouldn't got on a plane and come and fought, fight me. And then I, uh, after that, I started working hard. After I left Wembley, the next day on Monday, I was in the gym training. So the fire's still burning. And we, we heard that in the lead up to the Malik Scott fight, you went on a, a diet with soulmate food. They were shipping the food in. Did that have a big uh, impact on your performance? Oh yeah, I was doing so many food when I was uh, when, when I was doing that fight. When I was doing uh, the um, the guy from Brazil, whatever his name is. But you know, I was just getting into it, starts like burning off, burning off. And then I cut so many things in my lifestyle. But you know what? It's kind of paying off. But for the next two years. We're just going to push harder. Originally, you were going to face Deontay Wilder, and that fight didn't happen due to travel issues on his part. Is that a fight still like further down the line? Yeah, you know, uh, I saw him. I uh, boxed some other kid. He knocked him out. You know, you know the problem is with this heavyweight game. These fighters they don't go past eight rounds, six rounds, and then they start walking around with their ego up high. And then afterwards, they start going past ten rounds, and they don't know what to do. You know, uh, I'll be flying to Vegas before the end of this year, and I'm going to go find Deontay Wilder. And bring him back here? or, or find No, no I'd rather do it in America. It's much better for me in America. Why do you want Wilder in the States? Why not have him in a big fight like you had Hay in London? Why, why over there? You see, when you're a kid, you're, you're, it's, there's two things when you're a fighter coming up. There's two places you want to box at. It's your core, uh, Wembley, the MEN Arena in Manchester, and then if you hit the big time, you jump in the O2. And then if you hit the big, big times, you, you hit a football ground. You know, that's when you made it big. And then to make it more amazing, you fly to Vegas. And how much does this European title shot progress your career? Because if you win that, you can then get highly ranked in the governing bodies again and kick on for a world championship. Oh yeah, the government bodies, you know what, they, they need people like me to be ranked higher because we, when we fight, we bring money to the, to, to the sport and most attention people want to talk about the sport. You know, right now, uh, people ain't really talking about political boxing perverting because they don't really know what's happening with that situation. Uh, my point right now is just trying to make the game amazing. Well, you've done that already because you've faced some of the top guys in the world. You've faced Hay, obviously, Klitschko, Tyson Fury, Hellenius. So Tyson you... is not a top guy in, 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 in the rankings, I'm sorry. But you've, you've faced the, the guys that people would say that other fighters have sidestepped and you've gone in there with them. So you've yeah, shown you've got I, I don't sidestep nobody. If people want to fight, we fight. I never sidestep nobody. Who's your number one target? All of them. Would you they're, like Vladimir? They're all, on, they're all on my radar. So let's talk about two guys that you fought before, Hay and Fury. That's a big fight for the British public, but actually, how do you think it's going to pan out? It's not, it's not as big as me and David Hay, was it? Frank Warren said today that that fight was the biggest um, boxing event that, uh, on Box Nation since it's been a channel, and it's, it obviously captures the, the public imagination. It's, 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 there's nothing, they ain't... There ain't no fighter ever gonna put in British history gonna put a fight like me and David Hay. 
In terms of the actual the technical side of that, that fight between Fury and how you've been in with both guys, who do you think's I, got the upper hand? I, 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 I will put at least five hundred pounds for disqualification on one of the fighters because I, you know, I, uh, I think if Tyson gets hit and he goes down, I think his family will jump in the ring to just get a disqualification. You know, uh, that's on the, on my part. I do, the way I see it, how they like all see around ringside, and when the things are going harder for Tyson, they all want to jump in, and then. Uh, Either way, if David Hay knocks Tyson out, his family are going to jump in, so it'll be dis disqualification. And if Tyson boxes, he'll win the fight. If he just boxes with his jab, keep David away, he'll win. Uh, but if he goes there trying to lean on David, David is going to tag him. What do you think of uh, boxing as a sport now? Do you think it's starting to become more popular again after the back of the Olympics and fights like you and Hay last year catching the public's imagination? Do you think, and with Canelo fighting Mayweather soon, do you think? it's starting to reach a large audience again? It is, but, you know, we're not hitting the same targets that we were, we were hitting a long time ago when in the golden era, Ali, you know, the, those kind of eras like, you know, George Foreman, those kind of people, you know, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of died down because football's taken over. And, uh, and people, don't really, people aren't really interested in boxing no more, you know. And you just have to take your hat off to like Floyd Mayweather, you know, because he's keeping Vegas alive. The moment he retires, I don't think people are going to Vegas for fights. Richie Safe has said recently that a promoter can only do so much with a boxer. So it's actually to get to that elite level, not just skills will get you there, but a boxer promoting themselves will get them there. So do you think there's a bit of pressure on yourselves to, to sell a fight? No. If to be honest with you, it's, it's never... A promoter has to put a great fight and, then and the public will buy it. You know, uh, for instance, you know, like uh, four or five years ago, you know, I mean, Khan was getting given some nobodies and he was knocking them out. And then he started giving some tough fights and he started getting knocked out. It's the same thing as David Price. You know, he's getting easy, easy, easy pickings. He was knocking them out. Big fights that are coming his way. They don't know what to do with that. So I think most promoters have realized we can't give every fighter an easy way out because when they get to the top, when it's time to make money, the investment has gone down. So investment is more like when they promote fighters now, they want even fighters. So it's an even fight. You don't know where it's going to go. You know? And I, I agree with some of the promoters, but some of the promoters, I don't agree with them. Did you see that happening to David Price? Because he did have a lot of hoopla around him before the, the first fight with Thompson. Did you, is that what you thought before he fought Thompson, that he hasn't had the sterner tests at those times? Yeah. You know, why he believed was Thompson on the first fight caught him with a lucky shot. So he believed that was a lucky shot. And these people around him told him to take a rematch straight away. And it was the wrong thing to do. From what I know is people appreciate my skills. Wherever I go, hi Derek, oh we love the way you fight. I like fighting man. I don't I, I don't box, I love fighting man. If it's I only box when I'm in the gym to just make Don Charles to, to just keep him quiet, but really and truly, I love fighting. You've been boxing obviously since since you were a, a young a young man and you, you won ABA titles, etc. Watching the Olympics last year, did any of the boxers coming through there catch your eye and any guys that you were, you know, following from the Olympics now that turn pro? No. Not even Anthony Joshua, who's just no. from around the corner? No. You've made that transition from ABA champion to professional. If you had any advice for someone like Joshua, what, what would it be now that he's become a heavyweight professional? Just enjoy it. I just speak to Joshua. I just tell him enjoy it. But I don't follow his career. Are you, are you a big fan of the sport? Or is it just a job to you and you don't? I love know? boxing. Yeah, I like, I like boxing. I love boxing. You know, uh, Am I a big fan? Yes, I'm a big fan for great fights, good fights, yes, but for shitty fights, I'm not a big fan. I don't put up with no crap fights. Do you think there was a period in the late 90s, early 2000s, where the fans were fed poor fights, you know, on Sky sometimes and other channels, there was, we were just getting mediocre the, the, fights? The, the, the public have glued up now. They pay for good fights. You know, it's, the economy is hard and the public want good fights. To give the public the good fight, the public will buy it. You give them a crap fight, they're not interested in it.
being a world champion is still very much your number one aim? Oh you? yeah, man, listen. There's big fights out there, man. There's money fights out there and there's fights for the public out there too going to want to watch and by January I think it would be for the world title. And what's your main motivation? Obviously money comes into it and, and, and other things come into it but deep down what's Derek Chisora's main motivation for training? I just want to hurt people. Is that less, less That's the motivation. I just want to hurt some niggas and that's it. I just want to hurt them. I love coming in and put my gloves and I'm hurting somebody. That's just an instinct inside Yeah, you. I just want to hurt them. And second to that? That's when I hurt them more. <laughs> and what do, you, what do you think of the, the world heavyweight scene? People have got their own opinions on it, but you personally, like I said, you've fought some of the top guys already, so you've got a good understanding of it. What do you it's think of good. today? It's good. It's good. It's amazing. For now, it's all right. It's not like... If we had to give it like a gold medal or silver and a bronze, we'll give it a bronze right now because it's not in the golden area, it's not in the silver area, it's in the bronze red medal right now. So we'll give it a bronze. Do you think the United States needs someone like you over there, a bit of a character? American fighters don't know how to fight, man. Was, those guys are just punks. Now I got my visa, I'm going to America. They in trouble when I get there. And what does Derek Chisora like to do in his downtime? If you're not in the gym training and you're not dieting, what, what else do you like to do? What kind of stuff do you like to get up to? I like, I, like, I like to listen to music, that keeps me calm, that keeps me cool. What kind of music? Everything. You know Vinyls, what? everything. Really? Yeah. You've got quite an eclectic yeah, taste. What mind. kind of music do you like to train to? Everything. i got some weird ass music, man. Care to name any? I can't. One day I'll make you listen to it, but i got some weird music. But the thing with music, is still the same since they wrote it about 20, 20, 20 years ago. It's still the same. Doesn't change. It hasn't changed.